So over the weekend there was an interesting article that came out over on the Irish Examiner from John Fogarty. It was a proposal that's set to the GEA by the GPA looking to link both the National Football League and the Championship in a split plan for Gaelic football in the 2021 GEA season. Now this obviously follows up on numerous reports of course of the GA planning to adopt a split season where there'll be a separate window for inter-county football and obviously a separate window for club football it's something that I think that everyone wants to have you know as fans as um, the players want it the media wants it everyone wants it because of the attention that the clubs have gotten in uh, in this year of course and obviously having those separate windows it's much better for the clubs and it's much better for inter-county players as well and I think we've seen that with some of the high quality football that's been on show in club football this year as opposed to previous years where players maybe were missing for various club games because of their commitments to inter-county football. What's going on everyone, it's Aaron here from GEA Fan TV. I hope you're all keeping wonderfully well. Back of course again with another video on the channel and today we're actually looking at an article that came out over on the Irish Examiner that links both uh, the article of course is about the potential of the National Football League and the All-Ireland Championship being you know a part of the same season as you like the National Football League and the uh, and the All-Ireland Championship being linked in one campaign as such now obviously um this obviously follows on from the the plans of course with the ga looking to adopt a split season and it'll be very interesting to see uh, or, or to hear some of your thoughts obviously on this as well now of course first of all if you are new around here hit the like button and subscribe i would kindly appreciate it uh, helps the growth of the channel uh, gets it out there to more people and you know hopefully we can continue that going as well and i do appreciate all some of the you know some of the comments recently in the past couple of videos it does mean a lot to me so i do appreciate that and um, so yeah we'll go ahead and have a look at this uh, at this article then so um, another thing the article does discuss quite a lot is obviously no provincial football championships in 2021 um which is very interesting isn't it it would be the first year i think ever that there's been no provincial football championships uh, i know 1984 they done a, a centenary competition to celebrate 100 years of the gea i still think they they ran a championship that year as well i'm not too sure if they did provincial football championships i'm sure someone in the comments down below can let me know um but yeah very interesting nonetheless to have no provincial football championships you know th that was definitely something that a lot of people were speaking about for this year's championship when of course they had to go ahead and reorganize it was that of a potential open draw 32 counties um or or whatever you know open draw whatever way you want to do a top four or, or semi-finalists going up against uh, being seeded or you could do seeding based off the national league um now of course the the format in the ga is not the only issue that needs to be addressed there's multiple other issues such as funding etc to try and help the balance and help uh, the, the competitions become more competitive but certainly reformatting the championship for next year and for this year and for going forward is definitely something they should look to address but it is interesting that they would go with no provincial football championships next season because you, it, that would lead me to think that if it was a success we could see the end of provincial championships forever um, I don't think this is a plan that they're putting together for just next year I think this is something that they could potentially do in the long term. Interesting to see how people would feel about that. No provincial championships, you know. Um, you know, as myself as a Dublin fan, uh, you know, obviously Dublin have been highly successful in the Leinster Championship, and they tend to win it every year, and they they probably will win it for the foreseeable future. Which, in all honesty, has taken the excitement out of it for for many Dublin fans and many fans in Leinster in general, because. You know, you do want to challenge, you want to go to a game and be excited, you want to be on the edge of your feet, you want to have talking points, and a lot of the time in Leinster you don't get that. Now, in other provincial championships like Connacht and Ulster, where it's certainly very competitive, I think a lot of fans from those counties won't be too happy about this. I look at Roscommon in particular, when they won the Connacht Championship last year, there was a pitch invasion, everyone was celebrating all over the place, people were delighted. Um, there was a massive celebration in Roscommon when they won the Connacht Championship last year and when they won it in 2017 as well. So you can imagine that there's going to be 
uh, a lot of counties that won't be too happy about this you know you look at the Munster Championship as well that's always fairly competitive between Cork and Kerry and you know again you're looking at sides like Clare who are trying to bridge the gap etc so interesting nonetheless but we'll go ahead and have a look at, uh, at what the article says here so uh, in the first sort of paragraph here we have no provincial football competitions league based championship seedings and the all ireland senior hurling championship final taking place after the football final are all part of the gaelic players associations draft split season proposal now there isn't too much details into what the hurling season will be in this article as far as I'm aware, they're going to keep um, the same type of format, so keep the same provincial format, whether they do it as a, an open knockout or whether they do it as in the round robin or whether they're going, to, they're going to do it as the same as what it is this year remains to be seen. Uh, personally, I think the round robin has been a massive success for hurling, so I, I wouldn't want to see that changed. Um, I do know, obviously, with them doing a split season, there's going to be a shorter window to operate in, um, so it'll be interesting to see how they do that. But... Again, I think it's something maybe they could do is, is the round robin season in hurling. But interesting enough, having the hurling final after the football final, you know, that breaks tradition in many ways and would be interesting to see. I mean, I, for me, it doesn't really matter which final comes first. Um, but certainly, interesting enough, it's it's normally always the, the football final that's last. So that is interesting as well. Something else here says, based on the shorter time frame, the official inter-county players body submitted a working document to the GA's National Fixtures Review ta Task Force last Wednesday, which jettisons the provincial competitions in favour of a championship start predicated by league standing. So, it go the article basically goes on to say that the league standings would have a major impact into the uh, All-Ireland Championship so there's a couple of different proposals and one of them is the top four in division one commence the championship by facing the bottom four in division two with the bottom four in division one drawn against the counties who fill the top four spots in division two which is also interesting so um you know in that case you could have let's say galway who maybe finished first in division one taking on i don't know maybe sixth in Division 2, which could be Fermanagh, let's say, for example. I know Fermanagh could potentially get relegated from Division 2 this year, but let's just say that as an example. And that's basically how it would uh, how it would work. So they would be the 16, so those 16 counties would basically go into the, the last 16 of the uh, Sam Maguire Cup, which is what it says here. And then in Division 3 and 4, the same principles would be applied for the Taltian Cup, which of course is the Tier 2 Championship. So again, interesting interesting proposals there as well um, to see that go out now. They are also thinking of the possibility, uh, the GPA are also open to the idea of just uh, eight teams contesting the secondary competition. So maybe the top four in both divisions three and four there has also been the potential proposal for the top four of each four of all four divisions going into the last 16 and then doing some sort of seeding that way but again does that really make sense does it make sense for i don't know mayo who maybe might finish fifth let's say for example and wexford or waterford in division four managed to go through to the last 16 that doesn't quite make sense so i don't think they'll ad adopt that principle as such um, but it is interesting to see nonetheless. Uh, it does also see here the last 16 of both Sam Maguire and Taltian Cups will be subject to open draws and avoiding repeat pairings from the quarterfinals onwards. The GPA recommend games from both competitions form double headers. So I suppose what that's saying is after obviously in the last 16 it will be seeded. So like what we said, the Division 1 sides, top four, taking on the bottom four of Division 2. Um, and then after that, completely open draw. So, say for example, a side down near the bottom of Division 2, say if they did beat one of the Division 1 sides, it's an open draw after that. So they could potentially draw one of the you know weaker sides in the draw and, and so on and so forth. So interesting uh, that as well. You know, I, I still think, in my opinion, they should still go with an open draw, whether it's truly open draw, like a truly open draw where all the counties can play each other um that remains to be seen i still think maybe they could seed it in some sort of ways you know it's it's interesting it's an interesting one it's a hard one to, to comprehend obviously um this is something certainly that could work but i can just imagine 
you know, I still think there's got to be a lot of one-sided games there. Um, but I think that that's probably going to happen anyway. And I think there's bigger issues, obviously, such as funding, such as promotion, sponsorship, grassroots football, etc., that need to be addressed before something like the format. Because obviously, Dublin, let's say, for example, who finished maybe second or third or, or first in, in Division 1, and they face... Um, I don't know, Clare maybe who are down near the bottom of Division 2 that's always going to be a very one-sided game in the last 16 um, so it, it, yeah, it's an interesting uh, proposal if we go on uh, down here towards the end of the, the article here so it says, based on the 2021 calendar they envi envisage the All-Ireland Senior Hurling Championship Final taking place on July 25th concluding the inter-county season a week after the football decider the gap from the Munster and Leinster hurling finals June 12, 13, and all Ireland semi finals would remain four weeks. So again, it does also mention here that um, yeah, the hurling the hurling championship would basically go on longer, which le leads me to believe that the round robin system will be in place. Um, and then yeah, the, the hurling final would take place after the football final, which again is uh, is interesting. I believe I've seen somewhere here as well that the football championship. Um, could take that the final could take place in July. Maybe I didn't read this one here. Maybe I read that somewhere else. Maybe I did. So yeah, it'll be interesting to see uh, how 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 they do it as well. How it all plans out. The split season situation, as we as we see here. So the GPA proposed a 23 week intercounty window from February to July. So potentially the All Ireland final could take place in July, which you know again, kind of crazy. You know you haven't. An All Ireland final in December, and then six months later, you have another All Ireland final. Kind of crazy. By the time December comes around, it'll be oh, a year and three months since we had an All Ireland final, and then in the space of potentially six to seven months, we could have two All Ireland finals. But I don't think anyone's complaining. We all want to see football. We all want to see competitive action, inter county football, club football at the highest standard. So, yeah, this is very interesting nonetheless. Now, it does say at the end here, the GPA emphasised that their split season model is not a complete one as club league matches with county players would be able to continue during the inter-county period. So, again, we don't know the full ins and outs of this proposal. We don't even know if it's going to be approved by the GEA. We don't even know if it's going to go ahead. And, again, we don't know... When they when, when something like this is in place, it, it does potentially mean, like, if you're... A, I don't know, if you're a Leitrim, let's say, for example, um, maybe some players would rather play club football than play in the Tier 2, etc., you know situations like that so we'll have to see how it all pans out but just an interesting article nonetheless on the potential of the 2021 championship potentially having no provincial championships i think that's the kind of big one because going into 2022 and 23 etc does that mean there's going to be no provincial championships uh, I, I i don't agree with that personally i know there are issues with the provincial championships in terms of having too many one-sided games and having situations in ulster where uh, you know, Donegal have to go through Tyrone, Armagh, Monaghan, you know, going through a lot of Division 2 and Division 1 teams, whereas Dublin and Leinster are playing mostly Division 2 and Division 3 teams. So, again, it's um, it's interesting. It's an interesting proposal. Um, it'd be interesting to see a lot of your guys' feedback on this. I'd love to see some comments down below and, and see what you lads think about it. Personally, I, I, I don't... I think maybe for a year it's something we could try. I think going forward, the provincial championship still needs to be in place. There's bigger issues that obviously need to be addressed, like I was saying before. Um, and obviously, I think group stages for provincial championships is something they could look at, potentially going down the line. I made a video on that before, or speaking a bit about it before. So we'll have to see what happens. Um, an interesting proposal nonetheless. I certainly wouldn't be against it entirely. Um, but yeah, that's uh, that's going to be the end of the video, lads. Obviously, looking at the uh, potential for no provincial championships in 2021. So let me know down in the comments below what you lads think. My name is Aaron. Have a lovely week. And uh, hopefully, I'll have uh, episode two of the podcast coming out this week as well. It could be a big one. It could be a big one, but I won't, uh, I won't spoil it. Um, but we'll see what happens anyway. My name is Aaron, and I'll speak to you all soon.